Hey guys, Gore here. Welcome back to the channel. As someone that primarily covers squad, one of the things that's always in the back of my mind is the survivability and lifespan of squad. Both in regards to what can make the game continue to be popular for a longer period of time and what I realistically see as the end of the line for most players. Today, I wanted to take a look at this topic from a community standpoint, meaning how do squads continue to development and path affect both the current player base and any newcomers to the game. This is something that's been really heavy in my mind for some time now, so I wanted to put my thoughts and suggestions out there. Full disclosure, this is a rant video, so if that's something you do not personally want to see, please click away now. While my uploads here on YouTube tend to fluctuate from week to week, I am always streaming a few days a week over on Twitch, and I'm live right now, so if you're watching this video within a few hours of release, come on by for a bit. Now, let's get into things. The first thing that I, and I think many of you, believe is one of the largest contributing factors that affects your overall enjoyment of both the game in the short and long term, and the thing that will keep the game chugging along, is content. We as gamers are a fickle breed, and our attention spans can be short when there isn't something new and exciting to check out at regular intervals. Those of us that play squad, in my opinion, are at the far end of the spectrum when it comes to needing new content to keep us playing. I've played squad for about two and a half years and remained quite content playing the same maps and factions on repeat. But just because we have a higher tolerance and don't need a battle pass, daily objectives and whatnot, doesn't mean that repetition doesn't get stale. Squad's last largest content drop was in February of 2021 with the release of 2.0. With the update, we got a revamped British faction and a couple improvements to other factions and some other gameplay changes. This update had me playing the game relentlessly so I could try out the new British Sea Task, the N-Law, or grab myself a Mosin. Large content drops like these are what reinvigorates the current players and attracts new ones as well, but there's the problem. Since February, we've gotten Anvil, a map developed by Midnight Interactive, aka the original creators of the Aussie mod acquired by OWI last year. Say what you will about the map, but I think the desert landscape of Anvil is a fair representation of the worthwhile content releases as of late. Dried up. Many of us thought that we'd be getting the Marine Corps, amphibious vehicles, and a plethora of other stuff between February and the end of the year, but unfortunately, it seems like any of the worthwhile content is being continuously pushed back. And I'm no game developer. I haven't the slightest clue what it takes to implement and create these new elements to the game. Countless statements have been made that the team is focusing in on tech debt to reduce future headaches and solve some of the long outstanding issues, thus causing new content to be put on the back burner a bit. I honestly feel for the dev team. They're under constant scrutiny and pressure from an outspoken and passionate community that makes their displeasure known. But at the same time, that is what happens when promises are made and not met. The squad roadmap was one of the worst ideas and PR stunts that I've seen in a long time. To the analytical mind, we can see that it was done to sell more copies and add more hype around the game, but all it's done to the players that existed prior and the ones that stuck around is give us a constant reminder of what we could have versus what we do have. So if content is constantly being delayed and there's no end in sight for the official game, what hope do we have? Well, luckily for us, Squad and its community have developed some incredible mods ranging from slight gameplay tweaks to complete overhauls. And this is where I see the future of Squad modding. As much as the development team will listen to the community, they cannot and will not ever make such large changes that some hope for because it could drastically hurt sales. You can say what you want about the development of this game, but you as a consumer need to understand that Squad has no monetization systems in place. There's no skins to obtain or in-game currency to buy. They make money from selling copies. From a monetary standpoint, the game's job is to get you inside the door. Anything beyond that isn't their concern. You've spent your money. Now, obviously, Squad would be dead in a ditch if game sales were the only priority, and much can be said for how a mostly positive community behind Squad has not only attracted new players, but kept people coming back and bringing their friends with them. So in the absence of these large sweeping changes and new, fresh things to enjoy the game, we have mods to fill that hole. We've got things like the Galactic Contention mod that bring in the Star Wars Galaxy to the Squad framework, introducing clones, droids, blasters, jetpacks, maps, the list goes on and on. Other mods like Steel Division revamp the conventional forces and equip them with new and dare I say pretty tactical gear. With day and night cycle maps you can fight in broad daylight or don your nods when the sun goes down. Another mod and my personal favorite is the Squad Ops Hardcore mod that takes Squad and turns up the heat. 
The mod reintroduces things like insta-death, where any headshot sends you back to the spawn screen, a new game mode, occupation, that requires a whole nother level of teamwork. All of these and more are the sole reasons squad will stay relevant for an extended period of time. And I do have to tip my hat to the dev team, because back in May, they introduced a modding event where mods were allowed in the server browser and not just relegated to the custom browser where very few people would venture. This brought a ton of attention to these incredible mods, and when the time came to take the mods away from the server browser, and with some pushback from the community, the team greenlit mods being allowed in any server. I highly recommend if you haven't checked out the modding scene to do so post haste. They introduce so many new and refreshing elements that even for someone like me with thousands of hours, they give me that feeling that I'm brand new to the game again. The last contributing factor that I wanted to touch on and that can and will heavily impact the longevity of squad is the quality of players and subsequently the tools to maintain and improve the quality of play. Like the crusty veterans of this game have seen, when a game is thrust into the limelight and receives mass attention, the overall quality of player falls. The reason this is such a damning attribute is because Squad is one of the few games where your enjoyment is based heavily on the success and competency of your fellow teammates. Since the game's inception, new players have had minimal tools to learn the game, and instead they've had to turn to the existing player base to fill in the gaps for them. While this has been an incredible source for building friendships and communities within Squad, it also could be its downfall. The fatigue added to experienced players from this revolving door of fresh blood that needs educating is one of the leading factors to these veteran players stepping away from the game. In mine, and in many other opinions, there needs to be more tools, tutorials, and instructions included within the game in order to take a lot of this pressure off existing players and raise the level of play. I want to give you all an analogy real quick to help get my point across. Say you buy a piece of furniture from Ikea. You'd expect that with your purchase, you'd have an instruction manual to get through the assembly process so you can enjoy your new purchase. Well, to your dismay, the cashier at checkout instead gives you a phone number of someone who bought the same piece of furniture and instructs you to call them and have them talk you through it. Additionally, with your purchase of this furniture, you also enter into an agreement that any subsequent purchases made by other people of this specific piece may be given your phone number so they may call you for assembly instructions. Now, you may not mind helping people the first few times they call, but you get to the point where you just want to enjoy your furniture with your friends. But you can't because you're just being constantly bombarded with people that need help. A pretty extreme example, but the message remains the same. Previous customers are expected to help new customers, and if they don't, their own experience becomes extremely diminished. The unfortunate thing is, I don't see these tools and resources ever being added to help with this issue. Squad has been in development for something like six years now, so averting attention away from new content that will attract new players and shifting it towards helping out the existing players is something that I don't see happening. So with all that ranting out into the world, I wanted to make some suggestions and present a few ideas as to what could be done that would be a positive change moving forward. Firstly, in regards to content, get rid of the roadmap and just communicate better. I don't give two shits what's coming in Q2 of 2022. Give me a weekly update of what the team worked on, what progress has been made, and maybe a few teasers of what's actually close to completion. Yes, you may lose some attention because they can't see all of what they can expect. But with this, you don't set lofty expectations that usually just lead to disappointment because people will only deal with delays and broken promises for so long. Next, with modding, I have nothing to say. The team allowing all mods to be in the server browser was one of the best things they could have done for the game, and I'm excited to show off more of these mods and get some more attention to them. Lastly, with assisting the quality of play, something needs to be done. In OWI's Code of Conduct, it states there's no wrong way to play the game, there are only effective and ineffective tactics. As such, there will be occasions where even expert advice and guidance is ignored and there's nothing wrong with this. This is all good and lovely, but nowhere in the game can any new player find or practice any effective tactics or see the downsides of ineffective ones, so everything comes back to experienced players having to hold people's hands. I've made an entire video on this subject, so I'll only highlight a few things. For one, Squad needs a field manual, a collection of information that players can access at any point in game to further their understanding of kits, fob building, names of vehicles, common acronyms and terms, and the list goes on and on. 
Since I know a complete overhaul or an introduction of other complete tutorials is unlikely, use the giant sidebar on the squad home screen to remote and share useful resources that the community has made. Whether they be videos, forum posts, or written guides, any and all of these will give the tools to those looking for them to improve themselves. I know this sidebar has a link to the wiki, but please do not insult my and your own intelligence with the idea that everything that can and should be learned can be found there. As a realistic conclusion to how long I think squad can stay relevant, with the way things are going right now, I foresee it to be like three to five years. That might sound high after I just spent most of the video talking about how things were hurting the game, but squad still doesn't have any reasonable competitor. If you want to play a large scale, modern day tactical shooter, squad is what you've got. It's a lot like Arma 3 in the way that mods are integral to its lifespan and player count. Not to say the official content added to the game won't do that, but mods are and will be the thing that fill in the gaps and continue to develop if and when the game stops receiving updates. I'd really like to know what your thoughts about everything I talked about today in a comment down below. Also, if you agree with what I've said, leave a like, and if you disagree, leave a dislike. While these types of videos may be more on the controversial side, I think I have a responsibility to spark these discussions because if no one is talking about the problems and trying to give useful feedback, then the odds of anything changing is slim to none. I do thank you all for watching today, and until next time, I'm out.